if there's one architect who needs an introduction in the city or any other, it's Charles Career. Thank you very much, Jacob. Um, gosh, 10 minutes to cover the future of Bombay. I think only Mel Brooks could do that, but let's give it a try. I, th I think the first thing that strikes me is that the first characteristic, the fundamental characteristic of us, certainly in India, is our inability to act on our own predictions. Um, could I have the first slide? This is uh, where Bombay was in... Uh, in the year 1940, it was just 2 million people. Right through the 30s, 20s, it was about a million or so. It was a small town. In 64, and this is when the, the municipality published their plan, and uh, the population was 4 million, and there were three of us, Shiresh Patel, who I hope is in the audience. Are you Shiresh anyway? He's here. And Praveena Mehta, and myself, and he looked at this, and we found that they were predicting at 4 million, we knew we would grow to, next one please, we would grow to 8 million. No, the thing is, at 4 million, we already had squatters. This is 1964, more than 40 years ago. It was so clear that this structure, which, the, which had been invented in a way by the British because of the port town, could sustain a population of 1 million very pleasantly, and a million and a half, and maybe even two, but at that stage, you're going to, you began to get the have-nots, and you got the deprivation, etc. And they were 10% of the population. So we thought that you really have to create new job centers, you have to have a polycentered growth, because one city of 4 million, or 8 million sounds, say 8 million sounds frightening, but if it's actually four cities of 2 million each, then that's what the Bay Area of, of San Francisco is, for instance. So this is what actually happened. We, in, in 1964, we, we said we should restructure. That's what we call New Bombay, which I'll try and show you since Ricky asked us to explain what were the dreams for Bombay. No, at, a, at, a, at 4 million, we've got 10 percent. Is that not strong enough? <coughs> at 4 million, we've got 10 percent who are squatters. By the time you reach 8 million, because though the government acted on our ideas, they didn't act really on the real heart of the ideas, which I'll show you. Can I have the next one, please? You can see here's the 8 million people, and you'll notice that the squatters have grown from 4.4 million, that's 4 lakhs, to 40 lakhs. That's our inability to act on our own prediction. If we knew there were going to be 8 million, surely we would rearrange the scenery in some way. Okay. Then at, in 85, we knew we would reach 16 million where we are today. Now we still have, we reached 16 million on target, just like the trains, and uh, the, the squatters have now grown to 60%. So each time you see that the real delivery system isn't the formal sector of pakka housing, it's the squatters. It's the illegal sectors. So next, please. How did we deal with this? This was the original city limits right up to World War II. Those were suburbs out there. Bandra was the only one, really. By 1950, it had been pushed there by the Modak Maya plan. Next, 57, and then 64. That was the one which triggered off our thing. And of course, after that, we've gone further north. There's a, there's a linear system which makes most of the jobs are still, the office jobs definitely at this end of the city, and so you get land values which are next, which grow as you reach this end of the city. What we were trying to do was open up new centers so that the whole thing becomes one urban system around the water, but also reaches the hinterland of the state to try and take the energy of Bombay out there. Now, the way we were trying to do it is through public transport. I think that's a fundamental thing which is not been given enough, uh, um, what you call it, weightage in our plans, even in Delhi or any other place. Actually, the British created Bombay through public transport, which we will see. So I, what I'll show you now, here you are. This would be the, the way, the, and you'd have water, water transport too, but also trains. Next. 
Uh, this is a short film, just excerpts from a film I made at the time. Yeah, let's start it. Yeah, go ahead. This is one done at the time, a polemic film which uh, tells us what's happening to the city. This is a shot at VT station in 1967 or so. The people. It said that from up there, their numbers, down here, their people, only but just. I'm a human being. It's incredible. It's much worse today. What's nice are these three people trying to move at the bottom of the screen. You know, it's, it's wonderful. It's like war moving through water. People the just... city is really one long breakwater protecting the harbor from the open sea. In the south, the jobs. In the north, the people's homes. Result, every day a massive flow of traffic southward in the morning, northward in the evening. Further result, escalating land prices, highest at the southern end of the city. As the land prices climb, the buildings grow taller. As they grow taller, they cost more. Almost half a million people in Bombay are government employed. Every job moved will help Bombay, as well as the new office center across the harbor. Each government job triggers off five other jobs, we thought the government forming the basis for New sector. Bombay, the like city the of two million Delhi and being planned and developed too, across the harbor. By the Russians, etc. You use Opening up the harbor will bring the waterfront back to Bombay. Plazas, like the gateway, along the eastern shore of the island will change the north-south structure into an east-west one. And looking eastward, the energy of new Bombay will stimulate development in the mainland, opening up new growth across the state. Water will once again become the focal point of the whole system, providing communication between the various centers. And in the middle of it all, the island of Elephanta. An umbilical cord that takes one back a thousand years. Isn't that terrific voice you're hearing belongs Bombay to Bombay from the now on will become a multi-centered city around the harbor. Each new center opening up more space for the people of this city. Yeah, here we are. So now let's have a look at Bombay the way it was. As you know, it, there was never a plan for Bombay. The only, I would say there was a DNA, a kind of genetic coding, were the two railway lines. One was the Western Railway, the old BBNCI, which took people, the troops up to the Khyber Pass, and the other was the, the Central Railway, which took the business people to Calcutta. That was the whole, the point of the railways had nothing to do with the average person. But what they did, every time you put down a station, people lived around the station. So what do we learn from that? We learned that on the scale of growth we're talking about, public transport is a lead sector. If you put it in at the end, like in Delhi, it, it's a very good system they put in. It costs them about 10,000 crores a line, 10 to 20,000. 20,000 crores is $5 billion. Only Delhi can afford it. At least India can afford that once. But in this case, not only does it act efficiently, and you must realize that Bombay, with all our problems, is a much, much better city for everybody, young people, teenagers, old people, because it's a mobile city, because the growth came from the transport lines. It followed transport. Now, when you do this, you not only, and when we're talking of going from four to eight and eight to 16 and now 16 to 25, surely we should respond and say, how are we going to bring this growth around? The interesting thing is that, could we go back to that? When, when, the, when, the, when the growth precedes the development, not only is it more efficient, but you make money out of that railway line. You don't have to spend 20,000 crores, Mr. Pasricha. I know you're not going to, but that's what they've done. The British actually used private investment. These were private people 
who made money out of it. I think it's wonderful what they're doing in London where they're using the public transport to open up land. Because even if this railway line is subsidized, it becomes an indirect subsidy on housing. Don't you see what you're doing by selling a 10 rupee pass or a 50 rupee pass? You're enabling people to live down the road. Otherwise, they'd all be crowded at this end. These are fundamental lessons we should learn. The next. I'll just show you a glimpse of this. This was when we were working <clears throat> on the, sorry, yeah, on the Perel land. It's just over. It's not take long. This just shows you the way the, the transport goes, and it goes right through, the, you know, you know Bombay, the middle part portion is, and then, and see the way people live along these stations. And the most important area is Dadar because it's the, as you know, that's where the central and the western railways actually meet, the one interchange. And that's generated enormously because all urban growth has got to do with nodal points of generation. And then Perel and, and uh, Elphinstone could also be joined. They're very close together and that will make, then you have the crossroads which exist and we thought you bring in fast buses, reserve track buses, and at every intersection, you then get a growth point. So no one was against developing the land. We just felt that the public sector, that the public transport should be the lead sector, which then opens up the land and gives it real meaning, because then you know what you can locate. There. Yeah, let's go on. Uh, these roads, all the upper two ones are... Oh, a, I, I hate to rush you, but... Uh, yeah, it's the last slide. I just finished that. And, and this goes across to... Next one, please. This goes across to, could we just go through these fast, this last one? You know, this is the, the VT station, this is Church Gate, this is uh, uh, the Nariman Point and the Gateway. That's the Suri Bridge, which we just saw. All those roads would take you across to the rest of the state. Another way of opening up land, for instance, they talk about building a bridge for cars. One possibility is an underground tunnel only for trains, so you don't deliver any cars into Bombay, but these trains coming here can tie you into the Viti Station, Church Gate, and Nariban Point, and then from Mandwa on, let's go on, next one, they could continue on surface and open up all that land, and they could join the Konkan Railway, so you'd get a tremendous spine of growth, and most of the migration to the city comes from, within the state, comes from Ratnagiri. So this is just, these are the kind of, let's go on to the next one. This is what has been done. That's what happens. I mentioned San Francisco. You all know Frisco. Yeah, I've finished. And the next one I'd show you is Holland, right? And, the, and that's it. I just wanted to tell you that if you're going to do something, it has to take into account public transport. Thanks.